This screencast is based on Module 4, Lesson 26, where we, instead of dividing whole numbers by unit fractions, we divide unit fractions by whole numbers. Uh, we'll do some modeling here, and we'll also go over one of the word problems from the practice set that's a little bit more complex. We'll go through that in, in its entirety because I think it will help you a bit with a more complex problem with the homework. And I'm also going to get you set up with that complex problem with the homework that I just referred to a moment ago. Okay, we have our first expression here, one-third uh, divided by two. We're going to start by creating a tape diagram or diagram to illustrate what's going on here. So I'm going to make my bar diagram, and I see that it's divided into thirds. So I'm going to divide this into three equal parts. And each of these is, of course, one-third. And then I'm going to break each of these thirds into two equal parts because I'm dividing by two. I'll use a dotted line here. Now I'm going to shade my one-third. After that, I'm going to shade uh, one section, because I took that one-third and I broke it into two separate parts. I'm going to shade one of those parts. Now let's take a look at uh, what this represents. We see that we have now one, two, three, four, five, six parts. And one of those parts is double shaded. So I, my answer would be 1, 6, because it's 1 out of 6. But let's uh, look at it another way here. Let's look at that one-third. The one-third becomes something else now. I had one-third, but I've cut it into two parts, and now I have two out of six, so that's equal to two-sixths. So I can represent this as two-sixths divided by two, okay? And two-sixths divided by two is one-sixth. Let's do one more example. Now I have one-third divided by four. And once again, we'll take our tape diagram. Because the fraction is one-third, I will partition this into three equal parts. Since I am dividing each third into four equal parts, I will now partition each third into four equal parts. And I'll continue that. All right, what do I shade? I shade one-third. I'm going to double shade one out of those. So what do I have now? Well, let's take a look. How many equal parts do I have? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. So one out of twelve is double shaded. So the answer is one-twelfth. Again, I'm going to look at that one-third. And since I partitioned that into four equal parts, the one-third became four-twelfths. Now we start with four-twelfths, and that's easy to divide by four, because I have four-twelfths, and if I break that down into four different parts, each part is one-twelfth. The next problems, uh, bit of problems, we're not going to use that tape diagram, but we're going to rely upon this model here. All right, one-half times or divided by 7. And what I'm going to do here is I'm going to think I've got 1 half equals 7 fourteenths. Okay? And I can easily now divide 7 fourteenths by 7, correct? So 7 fourteenths divided by 7 is 1 fourteenth. We'll check our work. We're going to take our quotient and multiply it times our divisor. So 1 fourteenth times 7 equals 7 fourteenths, and that's the same as 1 half, so that checks. Going on to the next one, I have 1 third. I want to make an equivalent uh, fraction that's easily divisible by 6, so I need a numerator of 6. So 1 times 6 is 6, so I have 6, and 6 times 3 is 18. And I can easily divide 6 eighteenths by 6, and that's 1 eighteenth. Doing our check, multiply our quotient 
times our divisor and I get 6 eighteenths and we can simplify that to one third again that checks one fifth divided by two well, I need two in my numerator two something two what is equivalent to one fifth well that would be two tenths and two tenths divided by two equals one tenth so everybody kind of see the relationship between these numbers and finding our, our denominator that's going to work for us. Now we'll do our check. One tenth times two equals two tenths equals one fifth. Again, that checks out. One sixth divided by three. Well, we'll look at these. And I want three eighteenths divided by three equals one eighteenth. Do the check. You get 3 eighteenths, and that's the same as 1 6, and that checks out as well. Uh, I'm going to do some pretty difficult word problems here now. The first one is from the practice set, and the second one is the homework. I'll help you. Okay, Mariano delivers newspapers. He puts three fourths of his savings into a saving account and then divides the rest equally into three piggy banks for spending at the snack shop, the arcade, and the subway. What fraction of his earnings does he put in each piggy bank? Well, let's start with our tape diagram. We don't know the whole. But we do know that he uh, saves three-fourths. What do we have left? Well, that's one-fourth in the saves. And this is left. What does he do with what's left? Well, put an arrow in here and he breaks it down into three equal parts and we could also do it this way alright well we have three fourths we're going to shade this part right here for the part that's left and double shade one of these to represent one piggy bank Let's see what we have left. Well, we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. 1 out of 12. So 1 12th goes into each piggy bank. Again, we can look at that. Uh, we're looking at the 1 4th. And we wanted uh, 1 4th divided by 3. And 1 4th becomes 3 twelfths divided by 3 equals 1 twelfth. All right, let's go on to the next part. It says, if Mariano adds $2.40 to each piggy bank every week, how much does he earn per week delivering newspapers? Go back to our tape diagram. And again, we know that this amount is two dollars forty cents. Once we figure out that, we can figure out what one fourth is, right? And then we can find four units. So I'm going to start with uh, three times two two dollars forty cents to figure out what this uh, one fourth is. So we multiply. 3 times 0 is 0. 3 times 4 is 12. Regroup the 1. Three times, or two t 3 times 2 is 6 plus 1 is $7.20. So we now know that this is $7.20. So we need to find out what 4 of those are. So $7.20 times 4. 4 times 0 is 0. 4 times 2 is 8. And 4 times 7 is 28. And we put the decimal place in the appropriate place, and the answer is $28.80. Okay, here's that complicated word problem. Uh, uh, we're going to try to parse things out uh, by making a tape diagram. There's a, a real tricky little twist to this, and I'm going to help you through that. So we have Solomon read one-third of a book. He finishes the book by reading the same amount for each of five nights. What fraction of the book does he read in each of those five nights? So now we're going to take one, two, it's one third, right? And this is what he has read. 
and this is what's left. Now notice we're, we're working with two-thirds, not one-third. We've only learned how to use unit fractions. So what we're going to do is find one-third, and we're going to double that answer. So again, we're going to partition this. into five equal parts. Okay, and we can do the shading. We're going to find one-third, then we're going to double it. And one, it's divided by five. So we've got that. We can find the fraction of what's left here. We can look at this diagram. I've pretty much given it to you. But whatever the answer is that we've gotten so far, it needs to be doubled because we're talking about two-thirds, not one-third. I hope that gets you through it. The next part is equally tricky uh, because he reads 14 pages in each of the five nights. Now, that those five nights are not one unit. They're, they're two units. They, we doubled it. So we're going to find, we find that 14, two units, whatever those units are, equals 14. We have to find one unit, and then once we find one unit, we have to find all 15 of the units. I'm going to leave that up to you, but that should help significantly in getting through this problem where we have to work with a non-unit fraction, and all we have been taught uh, to do our unit fractions, but I don't think it's insurmountable.